Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today in front of me I've got one of the neophyte hybrids for the Gene Stealer Colts. And he might be one of the brightest models I have ever painted for 40k. <laughs> now whether you've got the Overkill box set, you've got a Gene Stealer Colt army of your own that you want to put on the table for 40k, or perhaps you've got the March 2018 copy of White Dwarf and you want to do a Gene Stealer Colt gang for Necromunda, this is a pretty cool way, I think, of getting an incredibly distinctive look, that nice bright orange on the table, and having your guys look the business, no matter where it is they are or who they're fighting. So, without further ado, let's get started, take a look at what we're going to need. Now before we really get into painting them, there's just a quick thing I want to highlight, which is the differences between the multi-part Neophyte Hybrids kit and the guys you're going to get in the Overkill boxed game. The big difference you might notice straight away is this sort of ripped tabard thing that these guys have got going from the multi-part kit. It looks like they might have been wearing a gas cape or something like that, but it's then been ripped and torn and turned into part of their uniform. Whereas these guys in the Overwatch kit, that's uh, a Overkill kit, <laughs> most of them have this sort of single piece bodysuit, which is all intact and looks pretty cool. The main difference in how I'm going to paint them is that on these guys I want the main color to be orange. So that means I've got to pick what I'm going to paint that color. On these guys I'm not going to have that tabard to sort of you know develop that and paint that out. So instead what I'm going to do is paint all of the, uh, the fatigues, their bodysuits all going to be orange and I'll paint his boots in black. Versus if you've got the hybrids kit then I've done the tabard stuff orange and then all of his trousers and boots just painted it black, like they're, you know, thigh-high boots or something. It doesn't really matter. But honestly, it's just one quick thing to point out the differences between the two, because they are both really cool, but they will change how you paint them. Now on the table, they'll still look cracking, because they're going to be wearing all of the same colours, but they'll look a little bit ragged as a gang, so sorted, okay? Because that's the kind of look I think you really want. Anyhow... With that sort of dealt with, let's get a look at the paints we're going to use. So to start off with, we're going to spray the whole model with Storm Vermin Fur. Now, I found out recently they've actually discontinued Storm Vermin Fur. Boo! But <laughs> you could use a Mechanicus Standard Grey and then quickly blat over the top of it with a little Storm Vermin Fur from the pot. You'd get much the same result. You might also want to try just using Mechanicus Standard Grey and see what kind of a result that gives you. Honestly, I think it would look pretty good, so, you know, this is not going to affect you too much. After that, you've seen all of the surface detail on these guys, and it's begging for a dry brush, so we're going to hit it with some long beard grey. Then what we're going to do is Bugman's Glow over all of the skin and a couple of other areas. You'll see what we get up to there. Then we'll do in the bodysuit with Jokero Orange, and then any black details will fill in, obviously, with Abaddon Black. Although, personally, I'm going to use... My good old Vallejo black for this one. Then any metallic details in Lead Belcher. Screamer pink just for a couple of cool um, spot details. Balthazar gold over the top of a couple of areas just to pick out with that brassy colour. And then because it's been missed, I've done two videos in a row with none of this Agrax Earthshade. So there's my boy. <laughs> We're going to get stuck in and we'll wash the whole thing in Agrax Earthshade. So let's get started with that dry brush. Now because we're going to be going over the top of this with quite a dark wash, you want to be a little bit more generous with this than you might normally. So what I'm going to use is my medium dry brush, and just start lightly dragging along the edges of, I mean pretty much the whole model. What I'm looking for is to catch his bodysuit, but if I get everywhere else it really doesn't matter. So you'll see it's going to go quite messy there. But all you need to do is make sure that you're catching all of these ribbed areas in particular, like look at these things, these are just designed for dry brushing. <laughs> so spend your time now, cruise around, and anywhere that you want this this ribbed look to uh, to finish off, get in there now with your long beard grey. Now I've got a little bit of water in my Bugman's Glow, just enough to make sure it comes off the brush nice and smooth, and let's start painting in all of his skin. But as an aside, when you come to his arms, oh no! I've gone over and I've painted his uniform too. Ha ha. And here's the trick with orange. Jokero orange doesn't cover particularly well by itself. 
So what you want to do is give it a similar sort of tone to adhere to first. And for that, we're going to use Bugman's Glow. So paint in all of his skin and at the same time, paint in his uniform too with Bugman's Glow. It'll look funny as <laughs> when you're actually doing it, you're going to think, oh boy, but trust me, keep the faith. Go around now and do both of those areas in Bugman's Glow. Ugh, that's not good. <laughs> that is not a good look. But I promise, like I said, always keep the faith. I've got here my Jokera orange, and let's go ahead and start layering this over the top of that Bugman's Glow. And oh my goodness, how easy does that go on? You see, there's the trick. Two coats for orange rather than like five. Now we're getting somewhere. That looks better. So grab yourself your black, whichever one it is you're using, and start filling in your black areas. Try and avoid the buckles on his boots if you haven't already got something on them. Um, I've splashed mine a little with some of the orange, but that's okay. I'll just touch those up with something later. Um, I'm also going to paint his gun in black too. Um, I didn't on the Adept, but for these guys, eh, see how it turns out. So anywhere that you want to be black, get in there now and start filling it in. Now we're getting somewhere. He's starting to look like he should, you know. We've got all of those black areas done in and just a couple of little like pipes and stuff like that around him just to add a bit of interest to the model. Now I've got here a little Necron compound and I'm actually going to finish off his gun in the same way that I did the Orlock Ganger, which is just to very lightly get some Necron compound, dry brush it onto the edges of this. Again, as always, if I'm concentrating, you'll find I'm whispering. <laughs> Now, you can take the time, uh, you could paint in the areas that you wanted on this with lead belcher um, and then highlight them up, you know, like you would with most metal. But for these Necromunda gangs, I quite like a slightly darker look to their weapons. And this little bit of silver, I think, really helps with that. So I'm just going to quickly finish this off and then we'll get on to the next step. Now next up is the colour I actually forgot to mention earlier, and that's Celestra Grey. What I've got this for is these little shoulder pads that he's got. Now you don't need to do this, this is a purely optional stage, but I like having it just to break up some of the grey on the top of his, you know, his sort of uniform look that he's got going there. So what you need to do now, just fill in those two little shoulder pads with Celestra Grey. You might find you want a second thin coat of this over the top just to make sure that that color is nice and solid. Then we're going to fill in some spot color with a little bit of scream of pink. So particularly arm wraps and stuff like that is a good place for this. Um, you know, it'll change from model to model. So it pays to have a think ahead where you're going to put this on the model as well. Part of the reason of doing the Celestra gray on the shoulder pads means you can paint a little thin line if you're careful. Just, there we go, down the center of these shoulder pads. Now the cool thing with this too is if you make any mistakes here, you can just bust out the Celestra Grey and straighten it up. So I'm going to finish those little areas off now. Now any chains or buckles, stuff like that, get in there with your lead belcher and start filling those areas in. Uh, these big ribbed pipes too, they tend to look pretty cool if they're done in lead belcher. It's up to you though. You cruise around, you add as much of this as you like. And then last of all, any cult icons and little bits you want to look sort of brassy, just get your Balthazar gold and go over the top of the silver. Nice and simple. Now at the same time as I was doing the brass on the miniature, I've touched in just a couple of areas on the base with that at the same time. Obviously how you're painting your base will depend on how you want to do it, but Hey, I'm doing it now because it saves time. So speaking of saving time, here's my boy, Agrax Earthshade, and I've got uh, a large brush. This is you know, similar to one of the big wash brushes you can get. And I'm going to load it up. I'm not going to go crazy. I just want the large brush for the coverage. And let's get in there, and we're going to cover the whole model. So same as you normally would, you want to make sure that it's not pooling too much on any big flat areas. So an old chrome dome here, just make sure that it's not uh, pulling up on the top of his head. But otherwise, cruise around and get all of these areas covered in Agrax Earthshade. The whole model. Ah, the magic that is Agrax Earthshade. 
you know, when that's dry, <laughs> what a difference it makes. And that is so easy. I mean, you could put them on the table like that, play a couple of games, but we've got some time. So why don't we do a little bit more? I've got here some Druki Violet and I've got a small layer brush. What I'm going to do is, because he's got that horrible infected gene stealer skin, is just pick some areas that I want to purple up a little bit. You want to be fairly sparing with this, but just concentrate around areas like his brow, um, you know, in the hollows of his cheeks and what have you, and just paint in some places where you want him to look grim and horrible and infected and what have you. So, as well, like along the back of his hands, for example, just painting a little of this stuff into the recesses of his skin. Now you can do as much of this as you like, so have a think about how you sort of orange, orange? How purple you want it to look, um, and then, you know, get into it. So I'm going to go around and finish this off now. Now once that's dried, you want to get back to your Bugman's Glow and start painting in some of the areas. So along the backs of his hand, for example, just bring this back up to that more sort of natural looking, less alien, skin tone okay now you can be as always as sparing with this as you like but i think it pays to bring up most of the skin back to sort of more normal so that only the recesses have that really purpley ugh, tone to them so i'm going to go around now and do that again this is one that you can sort of decide how much you want to use so have a bit of a play try putting just a little bit on at first and then if you want to see more, you can add more. Now you can see here, I've been quite generous with it and I've covered over most of the face again, leaving only the very deepest recesses with that Druhi Violet shading. So I've got now my Cadian Flesh Tone and I'm going to use this as my final highlight. You know, I don't want to go very bright with this skin. I want it to look ruddy and deep and, and purplish. So all I'm going to do is along the very edges of his nose, brow and just anywhere that you really want to pick out those extreme edges on a face so you can have a bit of fun with this now once the skin's done you want to get some troll slayer orange water down a little bit and start adding it over his fatigues now you'll notice even when you're painting this over an orange base coat troll slayer orange doesn't cover particularly well but that's okay what we want this to do is mostly just to change up the hue of the orange that we've already laid down. So you'll find in some cases that slight translucency can actually work to your advantage. However you want to go about it though, just cruise around now and try and leave behind the recesses and yeah, orange. And once you've got that out of the way, grab yourself your Fire Dragon Bright and we're going to do our highlights. Now with these you want to be fairly sparing at first. Okay, the, the trick with highlighting is always do too little to start with. And then you can sort of see if you want to do more. Is it going to be improved if you add more of that? So you probably can't see <laughs> terribly well on the camera there. But what I'm going to do now is cruise around and highlight all of the edges of his, there we go, of his suit with Fire Dragon Bright. Now this is not the, the quickest or indeed the easiest way of doing this, but I think this is one that's sort of easy to replicate and the results are really cool. So if you want to try this at home, you know, let me know how you get on. But I'm going to crack on with this now and put on my Fire Dragon Bright. Now when it comes to highlighting orange, I think the best way of doing it is to really make those highlights pop. You know, go all out and make the transition of color really, really strong. Because orange being, you know, a bit more time consuming to paint in the first place, make it stand out. You know, those highlights are going to be visible from the table and they look really cool. I really like how these guys turn out. So now we're really just getting down into the little fiddly bits. I've got some pink horror here and I'm going to do the screamer pink areas that we did before. Just to make these a little more interesting. A little bit of ultho and grey just to do the very edges of these shoulder pads. Just a wee bit of liberator gold on any of the brassy details you want to highlight. 
And finally, a little bit of Dark Reaper, just to do any of these blue leather areas you want. So along the edges there, and on the edges of his boots and such, for example. And then finally, along any of the edges on his hazard suit, where you want to tidy up, or just to really accentuate that hard edge, you can use a little Administratum Grey to brighten that up. Now, if I'm honest, this is one that I would normally skip for most of my, you know, my basic guys. I would tend to only usually do this on the leaders, but for the sake of showing off how simple that is, there we have it. Bit of Administratum Grey. And then with a little splash of white just to fill in his teeth, our jeans dealer, Cultist, is complete. Ready to introduce the denizens of the Underhive to the cult of the Four-Armed Emperor, because that is the normal number of human arms, right? <laughs> now, this is pretty easy to do. The takeaway from this should be, you know, orange doesn't have to be a big challenge. That base coat of Bugman's Glow is, you know, the trick to this. Other than that, it's all simple techniques. Dry brushing in particular on that bodysuit makes for a nice simple start. So what I'm going to do now is finish off his base, snap a couple of photos, as ever, guys, if you found anything useful, feel free, drop a comment down there in the old YouTube box. Both my Twitter and Facebook are linked there as well. So thank you very much for your time. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.